Welcome back to Manimal Crossing New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling, as you see what's going on on our lovely island of Horn Hollow today, where we'll be relaxing as per usual. Um, I just, not not just got done, but got done with a D&D &D session. It was group two. Um, and yeah, I, I don't really know what else to say about it. This is much more of like an introductory kind of session. Well, it's interesting for a little bit because basically both groups have thus far been in, you know, they've finished the back one and then they're like in a, a little bit of downtime and then there's like a slow sort of intermission where we're slowly building back up to uh, the plot relevance again. But we'll get to that in a second. Good evening, everyone. And now in Fawn Hollow, it's 11.27pm on Friday, November 1st, 2024. I mean, is the body today? Hold on. Or is it? A different day. Happy Diwali um, for those of you who celebrate it. Um, but I, I guess it happened. Well, I guess it's already finished UK time. So I guess it was yesterday, wasn't it? My apologies. Um, um, I hope you had a happy Diwali if you do celebrate it. Um, but I was going to talk about D&D. Yeah, but both parties are sort of in a thing where they were like in a sort of pseudo intermission period is probably how I describe it. Where they're sort of like, oh, you know, it's leading up into, um, we're, we're slowly getting there into uh, the actual sort of meat and potatoes of Act 2, in my opinion. Um, so both of them had, honestly, the past few sessions have been a lot of like sort of groundwork, laying down foundational stuff. Um, to be like, oh yeah, this is what's happening before it sort of like leeways into, leeways? Segways into the next thing. And Group 2 have now basically done with their intermission stuff, but it will still recur. From time to time, there was stuff from the intermission, but this is now sort of much more. We're now sort of torpedo focusing on character arcs, because the first act was not a character arc. It laid some ground ground groundwork for the entire world, really. But this is now we're like following one of the characters, and this is very much an arc which is more focused on their story than the others. Not to say the other members won't get their own little bits of story here and there interspersed in, of course. Um, but it's you know there is a primary focus here. Um, and it's very interesting this one because I was sort of going back and forth over a lot of how really to display this um, because this character uh, essentially comes from a noble background um, and comes from wealth and she left the wealth all behind because of family issues shall we say um, but she still has acquaintances I suppose from there and like um, one of the, the sort of through lines I uh, put in was like okay you can meet this character uh, you, you know this family who like are like whatever you know ones who are less tiresome to deal with um possibly i don't know we'll see how it goes but it's very interesting sort of displaying a sort of like a crazy level of wealth disparity um in D, &D because i feel like D, &D for one the, the monetary system in D, D is incredibly all sorts of confusingly messed up it's hard to really know what is worth what how much is something worth is this actually you know really expensive or is this just a weird amount of inflation from um, a, sh a strange portrayal of D&D &D pricing. At least it's very hard to judge how much a value of like a gold is worth or something because it's like oh you know a gold is like more money than like a commoner would ever earn in their like in a month or something I and mean, then there's also like the cost of like one room at one place and it's like I guess that's technically true but um, really the sort of explanation is adventuring is just actually quite just a lucrative lifestyle to be honest. It's very good money to be an adventurer because it's so risky. Um, but this one I wanted to be like, okay, so, you know, if adventuring is meant to be a good lifestyle, despite being risky, like, what about, what about, what does true nobility, what does true wealth look like in D&D? &D? So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to try and show it off the best way I can to sort of peel back behind the curtain. And the way I thought about it was like, it's not so much about what you can buy. It's about what things you end up saving from the money. Um, and the thing that I thought about was like, what would make a lot of sense for it to be like, oh, this is just completely trivialized by money. And that is the concept of traveling. So that's why, peel back the curtain, that's why um, the Connection City, um, which is meant to be one which is very much sort of follows around economy and fiduciary um, things and pieces here and there. Um, everything is very, very inflated and expensive here. So then when I can come in and swing in with this character who it comes from wealth and is insanely wealthy and basically trivializes some of her problems um it feels like it is actually impactful like you can tell how much money is being thrown around here and it is seemingly nothing to this character 
And I think it helps us like set up a background for this character as well, because the other characters aren't one. Neither character couldn't came for wealth and from nobility, but didn't know like how much of an impact it has. So I want to make it have that sort of like emo not just emotional, but some sort of impact as well, where they just go like, wow, it just completely trivialized things. Um the major thing is basically it they because of teleportation convenience, um and the money that they have, they turned basically what would have been like a multi day journey into hours. Just like that. And it was only hours because she was transporting a load of goods, uh, to be honest. So I think it's interesting. That, that's like a, I feel like it's an interesting way, I suppose, to display this sort of disparity. Because it's like, unsurprisingly, like when I want to intro people into like, this is your character arc, you've got to get the other people on board. You've got to be like, hey, you've got to understand what stakes are at play here. You've got to understand what sort of investment we have in here. Because the person whose character arc is knows, but not everyone else doesn't know. So this is a good way to be like, boom. This is what it's going to be like. Or this is a life that we left behind. Why? <laughs> so juicy, juicy setup. Um, the, other, the other group's going to have their setup probably soonish. Um, so we'll see how that goes. The setup's going to be a little bit different. You know, this character does not come from wealth, but we'll see. How we can how I can make an impact. I'm still sort of turning over in my mind because there's some other stuff which is going on in that campaign, which is um, crazy. But yes, uh, we're here to talk about the Paris holiday. A little D and D detour. I know the next thing. The next thing we did was uh, the next day we went to the Louvre, the Louvre Museum, which is one of the most famous museums I'd imagine in the world. Um, I'm not sure what the most famous museum is. Like UK has a lot of very famous museums, I think. But um, like what you got, like the Met Art Gallery, I suppose, in New York, the Louvre. I don't know what's the most famous museum in UK. Natural History Museum, maybe? I'm not sure, really. Um, or maybe v &A. That's probably quite famous. Let's see. Most famous museums. All of my new browser windows are opening up for some reason on my drawing tablet. Oh, British Museum. That's a really obvious one, isn't it? The Vatican Museum? Okay, fair enough. I didn't really can... I don't really think about Vatican as a museum, but yeah, I guess that's, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. Um, National Museum of China, Galleria degli Uffizi. I don't even know that museum. Museo d'Oste. Yeah, but there's a lot of very famous museums out there, ain't there? But uh, we went to the Louvre, and the only thing I would say is that we definitely did not go to the Louvre for enough time. Not as in like as a fault for us, but for one thing, um, didn't expect it to take so long to actually get into the Louvre, even though we had tickets. We like booked a time slot and it still took like an hour to actually get in. Um, must have been an absolute nightmare if you didn't actually book tickets in advance, but still. Um, very thankful for it in the first place. Um, and the Louvre is really a really nice gallery. I mean, it's famous for a reason, I suppose. I don't mean that in any sort of disparaging way. It's, it's a great, cool looking museum, to be honest. There's so many fantastic works of art on display there like i'm not even history and art history is definitely something I, I would love to learn more about but it's not something i particularly prioritized um but i can still appreciate like i feel like most people can at least have a decent appreciation for like works of art uh you might be like did you see the mona lisa yes we did see the mona lisa it was insanely popular as expected and it was incredibly crowded um couldn't get close to it there was a queue it was a one-way system through the room which contained the mona lisa it was a crowd system as well which you had to queue up and if you go to the front it was just hundreds of people taking photos of a mona lisa which you know, I understand because part of you wants to be like, hey, look, I was here at the Mona Lisa. But also part of me at the same time is like, you're obviously not going to get very good, in my opinion, shot of a Mona Lisa from this distance. Or at least nothing better than cameras that you'll see online, which will actually give you proper good stuff, probably. But at the same time, you know, I'm hypocritical because it's not like I don't take pictures of famous places as well. Well, I certainly do prioritise taking pictures of like um, the people I'm with and the place together i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna lie to you and be like oh i never taken a picture of like the eiffel tower by itself of course i do with my camera which is probably worse than um a significant amount of like professional photos out there but i don't know it's just like i guess part of it is to a degree special right part of it is sort of like yeah of course i want to take a picture of this i've been i'm here at the louvre what else am i gonna do not what else am i gonna do but 
It's like an important monument, right? So of course, you, of course you're going to want to take a picture of it, and I'm not going to fault you for doing so, despite how cynically easy it is to just be like, why would you do that? It doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with this. I don't know if I was going anywhere, to be honest, but... Um, yeah, like, uh, we saw, of course, we saw the Lisa. We also saw, what else did we see? We saw, um, Liberty leading the revolution or whatever. I'm, I'm not even sure. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. We, the, the, the major thing was just like, damn, we should, I wish we spent more time here, but obviously not always the easiest thing, um, to do so. But it would have been great to be, to be able to spend more time there because it was a really cool place just to sort of like hang around in to look at to look around look around look around and see all the different cool things there are you know but there's a lot of good work works of art there and even though i don't consider myself a history snob or anything like that i mean it's the sort of thing where like while it's great yeah look at look at the famous works of art there's also a lot of underrated pieces of art as well which you shouldn't necessarily overlook just because it's not something that's all well known. Like I remember like one of the pieces of art which stuck with me out more out of I suppose curiosity if anything because it was so interesting to me uh, was there was one which was um like it was painted on both the front and back of, of, of the work of art and I just like that was so fascinating and because Initially, when I saw it, I was like, why is this piece of work, like, so weirdly displayed? It's, like, jutting out from the side. Um, at, like, a very awkward angle. It's like it was in a photo frame, but the photo frame was, like, perpendicular to the wall. I know that was why. It was, like, a, there was a work of art on each side. And then <laughs> I joked with my friend. It was like, okay, well, because we initially walked up to it with one of us on each side. And I was like, okay, we're not going to look at the other side. We're going to describe what it looks like to each other. And they were just, like, very different works of art. Which was the most interesting part to me. Because um, I, I thought they would be connected. Or there would be like some sort of level of similarity between them. But it was not. It was just like one of them was literally. Um, one of them was literally like a, a, a scene of a tree. In like a bucket. And there was some like cherubs about it. And the other was literally just like a portrait of a man. And I was just like huh. Interesting. I wonder why they did that. I don't have an answer for you. But I still do wonder. Why did they do that? Uh, and therein, I suppose, lies a question. Of which I do not have an answer to. <laughs> but still, it's a, isn't it? things like that, you know? Don't you just find it interesting, fascinating? To a certain degree? Of like, huh, this is what... I don't say this is what art is like. I, I guess that's kind of like ambiguous and doesn't really say much of any note. But it, it, I don't know, it was just extremely fascinating to be able to walk around all these places and see these different works of art and that's why i'm just like i wish i spent more time there you know obviously very much something which we can it's not like it's impossible it's not like oh no woe is me i will never be going back to paris that's the one time i'll ever go to paris of course of course like i can see myself going back there at some point now that i've done all the touristy things as an adult uh, but Louvre has some Louvre was really cool um, well, you might be like, why were you so rushed to get somewhere else? It's because we had a, a booking for going to, um, the, the chapel. I can't remember what it's called now. We, we kept calling it Chapelle Rowan for some reason. I guess because it's called, like, Chapelle in France. I think that was the Saint Chapelle, that's it. Um, and we, we had to make it by their own time but one of my friends just was like all right screw that i'm not going to see Chappelle. i'm just going to stay here in the Louvre. and i'm like fair enough the Louvre has a lot of cool things and you know i certainly don't blame you for doing that um i only really miss that the Louvre is definitely much more of a full day or at least at least half a day sort of thing we tried to do a half day but again it took us like an hour to get in which was unexpected but so be it well, at least in my opinion was unexpected i thought i thought like we'd be turn up and it would just be like a continuous stream of people being let in but nah <laughs> Obviously, it was insanely busy as well. Perhaps no surprise there, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I find art galleries quite fun. Controversial, I know. Wow. What am I, an artiste or something? No, um, 
Well, I mean, I mean yes, I guess technically, but no, not like a physical artist. I, I don't find it fun in the sense that I look at these works of art and be like, wow, I wonder how they did that. Well, I mean, I do wonder that, but no, I don't have, I suppose, the technical know-how to sort of really analyse it on much of a deeper level, then this looks kind of cool. Um, I will say I'm not as interested in all these like sort of portraitures, portraitures. And it's not like these works of art aren't the sort of things where I'm like, I would want to paint something in this style. Um, I know my tastes of art styles tend to sway much more modern. If anything. But it, it's still like an interesting curiosity to me. Just sort of, well, seeing it, I suppose. Um... Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know where I was going with that. It's just interesting, I guess, to see art. To see a lot of different art. My friend also asked me, it's like, how long do you think it would take you to paint one of these? And I said that it could probably take me like several years just to learn how to paint somewhat well in the medium. And he was like, nah, you could do it. And I'm like, no, I don't think I could. <laughs> But it's nice to know that he has that sort of confidence in me to believe that I'd be able to like recreate some of these works of art. It's just incredible, I suppose. I wonder how they saw that art period in the time they were in. Obviously, they didn't look at it and be like, wow, this art style is so dated. But because that, that doesn't make sense. That was like a modern art style at the time. I wonder if it will be a similar thing for like how we might people have many years in the future might look at that the way we stylize cartoons and be like that's not what human beings look like not understanding it was a stylistic choice from the artist of themselves to be able to portray them that way i don't know but also at the same time a lot of artistic knowledge has evolved throughout the years to extend what people yeah like uh yeah are, they're pretty aware of like the basic knowledge of how to paint something in a certain way how to portray something and yeah i don't know who else they believe it's a cool museum from the outside as well it's just a big old pyramid hey that's interesting that's an interesting uh there's an interesting shape um and we saw it like a previous night as well uh to be perfectly honest um when it was at night time and it was closed I don't, I don't know what else to say, apart from Louvre. What does Louvre even mean? Is it named after someone? The Louvre Palace. Well, why is it called the Louvre? Why is Louvre called that? Name derives from an association with a wolf hunting den, Lupus. Oh. Although, to be fair, its origin is disputed. Well, there you go. The more you know. And on that note, I'm going to round this episode off here. So if you have been watching, thank you very much. It's been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Dear Darling. Likes, comments, subscription, shares, greatly appreciated. Socials, Discord down below. Hope to see each other again. But for now, it's our farewells. Until next time, bye-bye for now. <laughs>